Yeah, so in this video, we're going to walk through how to use some baseball data in R. I'm going to use specifically the Laman package, which contains a lot of preloaded data sets that you can play around with. Um, I'm also going to use the dplyr package, ggplot2, and then caret. So if you don't have any of these packages installed already, you can go ahead and install them through install.packages with the package name in quotes. Or you could go up to the top of your R Studio. Um, screen, click on tools and install.packages and this will allow you to search for packages as well if you don't have them pre-installed. So you can install them one of two ways. So once you have your package installed, go ahead and insert through the library. We're going to read in that package now. So I'm going to read in Laman, read in, read in dplyr. dplyr is going to allow us to do some data manipulation and cleaning ggplot2 is going to be for some graphing, and then I'm going to use the caret package in this case for a uh, function that we'll use later on to measure the accuracy of our model. So first of all, I've read in the Laman package. We can view the Laman package and what tables it comes with uh, down on our bottom right part of our R Studio. So if we search for Laman, we can go ahead and click on that package. And this will show us all the tables that come preloaded in the Laman data set. So in this example, in this tutorial, we're going to use the teams table. We can click on that and view all of the columns and what the definitions of each column are uh, for that specific table. We can also view that table by um, calling that teams table. So I'm going to call head teams. That's the name of the table. This capital T teams, we haven't loaded it into our global environment, but this will read because it's part of the Laman package that we read in above. To make this a little bit easier, I'm actually going to rename this table teams. Lowercase goes to capital teams teams. This is from the Laman package. This will be a new um, variable I'm creating in my global environment. So let's go ahead and now call head of lowercase teams, and we see our table here. So the table we're working with is a data set that every year is a specific team as well as a bunch of information about that team like the wins, losses, runs, home runs, etc. So uh, every record, every row in our data set is a team for a specific year. Let's start out doing some exploratory uh, data analysis just to view our data. And to do this, we're going to call in first our dplyr. We're going to use our dplyr package. And something that I want to view here is the total number of runs. I'm going to calculate the average number of runs across every season that has ever occurred in uh, Major League Baseball. So first of all, to do that, I'm going to um, create a data frame teams that goes to I'm going to create a new variable in my team's environment, and we're going to use the mutate function to mutate or create a new variable in our team's data set. So this is assigning a variable teams that goes to my existing data frame teams, but we're going to mutate that data frame to create a new variable called runs underscore game. In this case, it's just runs per game, but I'm going to be calling it runs underscore game, which is going to be equal to the runs divided by wins plus losses. So wins plus losses in parentheses will give me my total number of games. And then runs divided by, by that number will be the runs per game. So if we go ahead and run this now and view our data set again, head of teams. We now have a new variable called runs underscore game. In, 19, in 1871, the Boston Red Stockings had 401 runs over 30 games. They scored 13 runs per game, 13.3 runs per game. <clears throat> so this is good information, but what if we want to take it a step further and calculate now the average number of runs per game across all teams for a given year? So the way that we can summarize our data with dplyr is very simple. I'm going to create a new data frame now called uh, teams underscore year. And this is going to go to my teams data frame. But I'm going to group my data by our team I, uh, year ID. 
So by year, I want to get the average number of runs of all teams, not just for one specific team. So I'm going to group by year ID. And then we also need to summarize our data now to calculate the mean, uh, mean runs per game grouped by team. So to do that, I'm going to use the summarize function. I'm going to call my new variable mean underscore runs. And that's going to be equal to the mean of runs underscore game from my team's data frame. And then I'm going to, just for the sake of it, I'm going to remove any, any NA values uh, from my data set in this calculation. So if we go ahead and run this, now I'm going to call head of teams underscore year. We can see now that for each year, we have the average number of runs that occurred in that year. So in 1871, if we take all of the teams that played in that year, there was an average of 10.5 runs per game. All right, good information that we have here. But now maybe we want to see it graphed out over time. In order to do that, let's go ahead and use the ggplot package to do some plotting. So I'm going to take that teams underscore year uh, data set that we just created and run it through ggplot. So let's go ahead, um, use our ggplot function. Our AES, our X is going to be equal to our year ID. We want to put our year on our X axis. And our Y is going to be equal to mean underscore runs. The type of plot we want to run is going to be called geome underscore line. We want to do a line plot. Let's also add points into this plot, geome point. And let's give our plot a title with GG title. This plot is going to be called average MLB runs by year. So we have from our teams underscore year data frame that we just created, we're taking our year ID for our X variable, mean underscore runs for our Y variable, and we're doing a line plot. And if we go ahead and graph that plot, um, let me go ahead and move. We see that we have our plot now by year, the total no average number of runs for a, a team by that season. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. See a little bit nicer plot now. So you know, back in the 1800s, teams were scoring seven plus runs a game. In today's current modern era uh, baseball, we see that maybe about 4.8, 4.5 runs per game. Uh, pitchers are a little bit better now than they used to be. All right, so that's one way that we can go about doing some plotting in a little bit of exploratory analysis. But what if we want to go ahead and do a predictive model? So let's go ahead and run a very simple um, predictive model to predict wins by team. All right, first of all, let's go ahead and look back at our original data set. So our original data set is called teams. We have for each row in our data set, um, the year, of that team played in a bunch of statistics, one of them including wins. So our goal is going to be to use these variables, runs, at-bats, hits, etc., to predict the total number of wins that a team had for that given year. So let's go ahead and clean up our data set a little bit though. Um, I'm going to call this new, I'm going to clean a new data set called DF uh, Clean, and this is going to go to teams but I'm only going to select specific columns from this team's data frame. I don't need all of these variables in my model. I just want a few of them to test out. So let's go ahead and select uh, the name, the team name, the year ID. I'm going to take the wins, losses, runs, hits. Um, let's take doubles, triples, home runs, um, strikeouts, and... How about runs against? So RA, runs against. We could test some of these other variables as well, but I'm going to stick with these just for the time being. And for the sake of this model, I'm going to filter my data set where the year ID is greater than or equal to um, the year 2010. So baseball has changed a lot in the last couple of years. Just for the sake of this, we're going to take only data where, uh, from 2010 or beyond. So let's go ahead and run that and then view our data. 
So let's say head of df clean. Okay, so now we have a new data set with our team name, our year ID, and the only the statistics that I grabbed in my dplyr function uh, for the year 2010 and beyond. So if we say tail of df clean, we see that we end in 2018. So uh, in this case, we now know that the Laman data set in R is not actually updated with 2019 data. It only goes up to 2018 at this moment. Okay, now we want to run a pretty simple linear model uh, to predict the number of wins that a team scores in a season. So to do that, let's create a variable called LM1. This is going to stand for linear model 1. And LM1 is going to go to our LM function. Our target variable here is wins. Uh, so we're trying to predict wins. And then the variables that we want to put into our model, feed into our model. So this is going to be followed by a tilde and then the variables that we put into our model. So let's go ahead and put runs, hits, doubles. Let's go ahead and put all of our variables. I'm going to keep out losses because that's highly correlated with wins, um, triples, home runs, strikeouts, and runs against. So I'm going to test these in my model. Our data in this case is going to be df underscore clean. So we need to specify which data frame we're going to be using in this model. If we go ahead and run that, we can click command shift to run that information. Um, we're missing, sorry, these need to be plus signs separating our input features. So our wins is our target variable followed by a tilde and then runs and hits and doubles and triples and home runs, strikeouts and runs against are gonna be input variables into my model. And all of those input variables are separated by plus signs. So let's go ahead and run that. Our model has now ran, it's been trained. We can view the summary of our model by calling summary of our model name, in this case, LM1, and we get some statistics and information about our model. So we could look at statistical significance now of important features into this model. So we see that you know, doubles actually is not a significant variable, triples is not a significant variable, and strikeouts was not significant in this case. So you know, when you're building a model, now perhaps you want to build a second model. And in this case, let's only take the significant variables. So let's stick with runs, hits, home runs, and runs against in our, in our model too. So I'm going to call this LM2. And LM2 is going to um, go to the LM function. We're going to be predicting wins. And we're only now going to be using runs, hits, home runs, and runs against. So if we go ahead and run that model, look at the summary, we now see that all of these variables that were fed into our model are now significant. So we have some other information, like R squared, that we can use to test from one model to another uh, to, to measure how well a model is performing. All right, so now we've trained our model, but we need to actually make predictions on our data set. So ideally, we would have broken up our, our data into a training and testing data set, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna be training and predicting all in the same data set. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a variable called preds, and preds is gonna be equal to go to our predict function. We're gonna use model two, so LM2, and we're gonna run that function on our data frame clean, so df underscore clean. So this output here, if we go ahead and run that and print preds, we now get the predicted value for every record in our data set. So I'm gonna print, um, I'm gonna, I wanna bring this information back into my original data frame. So here we see for the first record in my data set, we get a predicted value of 67.5 wins. Our second value, we get a predicted value of 90 wins. I wanna make this into an actual variable in my original data set though. So let's say, let's take df clean. I'm gonna say df clean dollar pred. This is gonna be a new column. It's gonna go to preds. And now when we look at df clean, we have our original data set, 65 wins, but now we also have our predicted value for each record. So we see again for the Diamondbacks in 2010, we predicted 65 wins. Uh, sorry, they actually had 65 wins and we're predicting 67 wins. 
So we can see how well we do. Um, the Braves, we were, they actually had 91 wins. We're predicting 90 wins. If we use our root mean squared error function, this is coming from the caret package. So that's actually the only reason why we're using the caret package in this particular tutorial. We could say uh, df clean comma, um, sorry, df clean comma pred comma df clean dollar win. So let's get the root mean squared error between these two values and we get a root mean squared error of 3.88. So this alone doesn't tell us too much information. It does a little bit, but ideally, we would want to use this value to compare against different types of models uh, and see how well each model is performing. All right, so there we have it. We just predicted the total number of wins uh, for a Major League Baseball team over the span of a season. Um, pretty simple model. We didn't put a lot of sophisticated data points into our model, but um, just by the... Just by looking at it, we got some pretty good results. We could see that as teams increase their runs over a season, they're probably going to have more runs in that season as well. Uh, intuitively, makes a little bit of sense. Last thing before we close up, we're going to plot this information. So I'm going to uh, make a plot here where we have our predicted value against our win value. In order to do that, let's go ahead and take DF clean, run that through ggplot, AES, um, pred is going to be our x variable, wins is going to be our y variable. Let's do a geom point plot followed by geom smooth. So you'll see what this shows in a second. And then a, a title to our plot, gg title, um, predicted wins versus actual. All right, let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to move myself over. And if we run that now, we have our predicted wins on our x-axis and our actual wins on our y-axis. We could see which data points we do a really good job at predicting and which we don't do. So, you know, around the 80 win cluster, it looks like we're doing a pretty good job predicting teams' uh, total records if they had 80 wins. But as we get towards our, our um, endpoints down at the bottom around 60 and, and our uh, maximum value of about 105, we start to do a little worse in our prediction. So um, by all means, this model could be drastically improved, but uh, we've just created a pretty simple starting point linear model to predict total number of wins that a baseball team might have. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. Thank you.